and welcome to the Bible Christian of God observance of the first night of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And happy high Saturday too. Uh, as we get into this lesson, we're going to understand what the first night represents. Now, I got a lot to get out. And what we want to do is get into this lesson. Uh, uh, rather, what the Lord mentioned all his feasts at. We observed yesterday the feast of Passover, which can only be observed at night. And today, following this is the 15th day of the month, Abib. And we are observing the Lord's Feast of Unleavened Bread. And we're going to get a good understanding what, because this is the only feast that has a repeat. So seven days from now, we're going to have a holy gathering on the seventh day. So let's go into Leviticus 23rd chapter, where the Lord has all his feasts listed, and get some understanding about why we're here on the first night, okay? The 15th day of the month, A.B. And it reads, in the 23rd, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Even these are my feasts. Notice this is the Lord's feast. This is not Israel's feast. This is the Lord's. It's not the Jews' feast. It's the Lord's. Then it goes into the six days concerning the Sabbath. But I want to go and skip down to verse 4 and get to what's held annually. Because we understand, we're going to understand that truly this feast must be kept, and that was kept by God's church. Now, right here are his annual feasts in verse 4. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which he shall proclaim in their seasons. In the 14th day of the first month, at even is the Lord's Passover. That's what we did sundown Friday. That's what we did last night. Now we're on the 15th day. Notice verse 6. And on the 15th day of the same month, it's the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. In the first day ye shall have holy convocation. Ye shall do no survival work therein. That means working for a living. Working and get paid. But ye shall offer an offer made by fire unto the Lord seven days. In the seventh day is a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. So now let's go and see if this thing went beyond the cross, y'all. Let's go to Acts 12 chapter. We got a lot of people that think, well, you know, that's an Old Testament thing, but the New Testament, we don't have to worry about those things. We don't deal with those things that are under the Old Covenant. Well, let's see if the feast went beyond the Old Covenant, beyond the cross, and right here in Acts 12 chapter. Acts 12 chapter. And we're going to start at verse 1. Acts 12 chapter and verse 1. Notice what it says here. Now, about that time, Herod, the king, stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Now, watch this. Herod was observing, was not observing the Feast of Unleavened Bread. He was observing something else that the scripture is going to tell us. But notice, when he killed the brother James, notice verse 3. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, because the Jews that were not. Uh, a part of the church, the body of Christ, were not down with observing it as the Christians was doing at the time. So they had a problem. It was rejoicing because someone that was part of the body of Christ had died because of Herod. Notice, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then those were the days of unleavened bread. We tell me the unleavened bread did not stop at the cross. The church was still observing the days of unleavened bread, the seven days, the very seven days we just read in Leviticus 23rd chapter. Now, notice, we're going to go a little further. Let's go to Acts 20 and 6. Because we have people that think, well, we can't observe the feast because we're not in our land. Well, 
We gathered what before we was in our land, y'all. We would see these feasts while we were in the wilderness. It wasn't even yet in that land, in the promised land yet. So how can we not observe outside of the beer we gathered before we, we would see these feasts before we were in the land? So Acts 20 and uh, verse 6. Because Paul did a lot of traveling. A lot of traveling. And uh, what I want to do is go right here. Actually, we're going to start at 5. And notice what it says, Acts 20 and 5. These going before tarried for us at Troas. And we sailed away from Philippi after days of unleavened bread because they held a holy congregation for seven days. Oh, this is beyond the cross. This is what Paul was doing. And, those, and came into them to Troas in five days where we abode seven days. So the Feast of Unleavened Bread never ceased at the cross. It was continually observed by the body of Christ, the church. Now let's go and look at why it is the 15th day, y'all. Let's go to Numbers 33 chapter. Numbers 33 and verse 1. Because the Lord had his Passover done while we were in, in Egypt. But we couldn't keep the feast while we were in bondage. That's what the blood last night represented, being delivered by the blood. But the 15th day represent what Israel did right here. Numbers 33, Numbers 33, and verse 1. These are the journeys of the children of Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt with their armies under the hand of Moses and Aaron. And Moses wrote their goings out according to their journeys by the commandment of the Lord. Notice, and these are their journeys according to their going out. And they departed from Ramsey in the first month on the 15th day of the first month on the morrow after the Passover. That's why we're observing this first day of the feast because it represents coming out of Egypt. The blood saved us. Now the 15th day represents coming out of bondage, out of the house of bondage. We're going to see how that so very, very, very clear. So now, uh, uh, we'll finish that. On the morrow after the Passover, the children of Israel went out with a high hand in the sight of all of the Egyptians. So now let's go to Exodus 23rd chapter and look how the Lord commanded the observance of this thing to be done. Exodus 23 and uh, 14. Exodus 23 and verse 14. Notice this. Notice this. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. Three times the Lord questioned. Require this. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days. Seven days, y'all. <clears throat> As I commanded thee in the time appointed of the month 80. For in it thou camest out from Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. So now we're not going to go and read the other two feasts of the one that's at hand that we observe this night. It's the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That's what this represents. So now, let's go to Exodus 13 chapter. Let's back up in the same book of Exodus. We're going to Exodus 13 chapter. And verse 3. Exodus 13 and... Three. Watch this. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which ye came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. That's what Egypt represents, the house of bondage. For by strength of hand, the Lord brought thee out from this place, that no leavened bread be, be eaten. This day came ye out in the month Abib. So Abib represents the first month. We observe the night. On the Passover, on the 14th day, the Passover, 
On the 15th day is the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Now notice, and it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Hevites, and the Jebusites, which he swore to thy fathers to give thee a land flow with milk and honey, that thou shalt keep the service in this month. Seven days shall thou eat unleavened bread, and the seventh day shall be a feast unto the Lord. So on the first day and on the seventh day is a feast unto the Lord. A whole convocation like we read. In Leviticus 23rd chapter. So notice it says, unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days. See, everybody could do this. Everybody couldn't show up last night at the Passover. But notice it says, unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, and there shall be no leavened bread, because it's the feast of unleavened bread. Be seen with thee, neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. And thou shalt show thy son in that day, saying, This is done because of that which the Lord did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. And it shall be for a sign upon thee, upon thy hand, and a memorial between thy eyes, that the Lord's law may be in thy mouth. For with a strong hand hath the Lord brought thee out of Egypt. Thou shalt therefore keep this ordinance in his season from year to year. That's why when we went in Leviticus 23rd chapter, verse 4, it starts talking about things that are done once a year, year to year, not week to week like the Sabbath day is. Well, look, let's back up to the 12th chapter and look at verse 18. The same book of Exodus. We're going back up to Exodus 12 and look at verse 18. Exodus 12 and 18. Notice what it says. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, at even. Notice, at even. The 14th day at even. That was last night for the Passover. This night is the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. You shall eat unleavened bread until the 1 and 20th day of the month at even. Now notice, you got the 14th day, so if you add 7 plus 14, how many days you get all together? 21. 21. So this thing is 1 plus 7, y'all. Notice. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eateth that which is leaven, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. Notice it said whosoever eateth. It didn't say if the Jew eateth. Or the uncircumcised eat it. He said, whosoever. Well, whosoever couldn't partake of the Passover last night. Because the Passover, you have to be circumcised to partake of the Passover. That's why the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the first day, is for whosoever will do what we just read. Because he said, for whosoever eat it, that which leaven, even that soul shall be cut off from among the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or or born in the land, you shall eat nothing leavening, and in all your habitations you shall eat unleavened bread. This is the commandment from day one, y'all, of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So now, let's go to Acts 7, 37, because when he brought him out, this is what he was setting up, y'all. Let's go to Acts 7 and 37. This is why it's so important to observe the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Because this is what the church, he set his church up. And we'll understand that the Unleavened Bread represents sincerity and truth. And we cannot worship God but in the spirit and in truth. That's what God requires. We're going to read that. We're going to read that. We're Acts 7 and uh, 37. This is what... Uh, it says, this is that which the Moses, this is that Moses, rather, was sent to the children of Israel. A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. The church in the wilderness. They didn't become a church until they made it to the wilderness. Why? Because we're going to understand that when he set up his church, it's based on sincerity and truth. And that's how we have to worship God in spirit and in truth. But this is what it finishes. And with the angel which spake to him in Mount Sinai and with our fathers 
who received the lively oracles to give unto us. Because while they was in Egypt, let's see what happened. Let's go to Exodus 5 and 1. Exodus 5 and 1. While they was in Egypt, what was what was, what was the state of condition? What was Israel doing? What could they do? They were in the house of bondage. They did their blood to save them while they were in bondage. So they can come out and serve God. That's what we're going to read right here. Exodus 5 and verse 1. Exodus 5 and verse 1. One. Because the Passover was taken while they was in the land of Egypt, while they was in bondage. Once the Lord dropped that judgment on them, he saw the blood, he passed over them. That's what the Passover represents. But here, watch what he says here in Exodus 5th chapter, in verse 1. We're just going to read verse 1. And afterwards, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Oh, they couldn't hold the feast while they was in bondage. They need the blood to free them. So now they were free to go on the 15th day after the Lord dropped that drama on them on the Passover. So now let's go to Exodus 20th chapter. But they had to go hold a feast, and this is what God's church does. They hold a feast, not holidays, not Easter Sunday. That's a holiday. That's not holy to God. They hold, God's church hold a feast unto him, a feast of unleavened bread. And who can read the feast of Pentecost and the feast of tabernacles. Those are the three times in the year that we shall hold a feast unto the Lord. Let's go to Exodus 20 chapter and watch what the Lord said. In. And right at the top, Exodus 20 and verse 1. We're going to go to Exodus 20 and verse 1. Exodus 20 and verse 1. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. See, when you come on Lord Sabbath's church in the wilderness, they, they were there because they were made free. The blood saved them because he sent the destroyer through. Once the Lord sent the destroyer through, now they were free to come out and serve God. They were released from the house of bondage. They had liberty. Where if they before that, they had bondage. So that's why the Lord said, I brought you out of the house of bondage, which is what Egypt represented. No, it's the very first verse, uh, next commandment he gave me, he said, in the first command, thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's why we know the people that sent to tomorrow on Easter Sunday, they in bondage, because they got Easter before them. And God never said command us to observe uh, Easter Sunday or anything like that. That comes from another God. Okay? So now, uh, let's go skip down to verse uh, 17. I'm sorry, we're going to go to Isaiah. I'm sorry, my bad, my bad. Let's go to Isaiah 30, brother, and we're going to examine that a little, a little closer. Isaiah 11 and 30. Sorry, 11, Isaiah 30, chapter, verse 1. Isaiah 30, chapter, and verse 1. Watch this. Because you got people thinking about Easter Sunday now. They're not thinking about the past. They're not thinking about the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Why is that? Because they're still in bondage. I'm going to show you right here. Watch this. Isaiah 30 and 1. It reads, Woe to me, Jerusalem. Woe to me, Jerusalem. Woe to me, Jerusalem. Woe to the rebellious children, said the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit. That they may add sin to sin. Not sin less and less, but they want to add sin to sin. Why is that? That go down into Egypt. Mm. So that's what happens in the house of bondage. Sin being added unto sin. Because he said, they have not asked at my mouth. 
So we got to ask that Lord's mouth, y'all. See, to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh? But wait a minute, the Lord destroyed Egypt. How did they deal with Pharaoh now? You're going to find out real soon. That's why the Lord's church deal with the feast. That's why they couldn't hold the feast while they were in bondage. They had to come out into the wilderness to become his church and his church hold the feast. But these right here that's adding sin to sin, that's covered with a covering, they stood in themselves in Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Notice he says, therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. And you think about rabbits and eggs. What they got to do with Jesus? That's a shameful connection. There's nothing that rabbits and eggs have to do anything with the Lord. Yeah. And rabbits don't lay eggs. You know that. We all know that. Even the ones that know them tomorrow believe that. They know that. But what rabbits and eggs got to do with it, they're still going on with that shameful thing. But notice he said, Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame, and the trust in the shadow of Egypt but confusion. That's why so many different denominations on Sunday. How many different denominations are there? 9,000 and growing. Okay. So uh, 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 let's go and see why the Lord gave him his commands when he brought them out. Let's go to James 2 and 8. James 2 and 8. When he brought them out of the house of bondage, when you come out of bondage, that means you went you've gone into what? Liberty. That's why he gave his commands. That's why they went to hold a feast unto the Lord. In the wilderness, that's why they became the church. God's church is not in bondage to Pharaoh. And right here in the book of James 2 and 8. James 2 and 8. Watch what James says here. James 2 and verse... Eight. It reads, if ye fulfill the royal law, wait a minute, there's a royal law? I mean, there's a king. They call this a royal law. Let's see what, 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 what is the royal law. According to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. Then why would the Lord end this law, y'all? Being this called a royal law. Mm -hmm. And it said, love thy neighbor as the, lo thou love thyself, ye do what? You do well. Now watch this. But if you have respect to persons, you commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. This is what tells us what is a transgressor, the law. So Jesus couldn't do away with this. Then nobody would know who the transgressors are. Okay. But watch now. Because you have a lot of people around here uh, to kind of. Uh, they want to bash people that believe in keeping the law of God. And look, it says, For whoso shall keep the whole law and yet fear in one point, he is guilty of all. And they say, Oh, brother, you keep the whole law, the sacrifices, and all that. Brother, let's find out what whole law he's talking about. Because mm -hmm. up top, we just got to read, there is a royal law, mm -hmm. and there's nothing royal about animal sacrifices. Nothing. Not one thing. So we got to find out what whole law he's talking about. Let's go and look at it. For he that said, do not commit adultery. Hey, where it come from? Okay. He that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Where do we find that at? Let's hold this spot and look at what it's actually come. What is the royal law? Let's go to hold that spot. Let's go to Exodus 20, back to Exodus 20. And, and pick this up. What's the royal law? Oh, if we read at the top of this chapter, it's what the Lord said he gave them when he brought them out of the house of bondage. This is the law of liberty. This is the royal law. And within this, because you have thou shalt have no other gods. We read that a little earlier. He wouldn't say thou shalt not make any graven images. Thou shalt not bow down and say to them. He even showed in verse 6, there's mercy in this law. Then he told you not to take his name in vain. And then at the 8th verse, he tell you, remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy. And then at the 12th verse, he tell you what? Let's read that. 
Exodus 20 and I, I said uh, Exodus 20 and we're going to, yeah, we're going to read down into where it says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. So write Exodus 20 and 12 because we're going back to that James. He said, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery. Oh, so this is the whole law we're talking about. It's nothing about animal sacrifices in this. The feast days ain't this. In this. The dietary laws ain't in this. The inheritance laws ain't in this. We're talking about the royal law. The law that just got through saying, if thou, thou shalt not commit adultery, but thou kill, this is the whole law that he's talking about. Let me finish that. Verse 15. He said, uh, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his man servant, nor his maid servant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So now let's go back and pick it up. Back in James, verse 11. For he that said, Do not commit adultery, said also, Do not kill. And we, we just got to read that out of the world. Oh, he said, now if thou do no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. No, it says, so speak ye, and so do. That's why we can't just hear with the other word. We got to be doers of word. That's what James is breaking down here. And no, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Oh, you may tell me it's law of liberty. We just got to read this Exodus 20 chapter. And to rest, that's why he said at the top. Verse 2 in Exodus 20, I am Lord thy God which had brought thee out of the land and eat out of the house of bondage. So he gave him the law of liberty to serve him. So notice, verse uh, 13, for he shall have judgment without mercy that have showed no mercy, and mercy rejoices against judgment. So that's why we got to deal with this law of liberty. So now I want to do, let's go to Galatians 5 and 1. We're going to read this one verse. Galatians 5 and 1. Because it is Christ that doth make us afraid. And it is paganism that put you in bondage. Think about it. You got to worry about, oh, I got to get, how many Christians you get? I got to get. Oh, man, I got to go get something that don't make no sense. Rabbits and eggs for the kids. Giving them lives. Oh, I got to go get a nice dress up. Oh, you in bondage to a flesh thing. How they feel and what they feel. But here in Colossians, and it's vain, keep you in bondage to me. But right here, Galatians 5 and 1, notice what Paul says here. 5 and 1. Galatians 5 and 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty where Christ has made us free. That's why. We no longer in the house of bondage. That's why you come out of what they call holidays. You realize you were in bondage. Now you are living to serve God and not serving some man. That's why he said, well, Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. That means without the laws, Amen. without the royal law. Now watch this. Let's go to Romans 6 chapter. Romans 6 and 6. Eight. Romans 6 and 6. Eight. Romans 6 and 16. Notice. It says, Know ye not. That to whom you yield yourselves servant to obey his servants, you are to whom ye obey. See, while they was in bondage to Pharaoh, that's who they had to obey. Mm -hmm. Until the Lord hit them with the Passover power. Now they're free to serve God. Same way with Christ. You were in bondage to what some man thought, or some denomination, or some religion, or some holiday, until you really got Christ in your life. Now you know to keep. The Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Passover, the Holy Days of the Bible. Because holidays ain't in here, y'all. 
But right here, he said, To whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness, because that's what it comes down to, y'all. Obedience to righteousness. Because they, while we were in bondage on Pharaoh, that's obedience, uh, obedience to wickedness. And bondage, cruel bondage. You come under the liberty of Christ, now you have obedience unto righteousness. Notice, but thank, but God be thanked. Notice, he said, but God be thanked that ye were the service of sin. Were. You used to think you had to have a dick on your side. You used to think you had to lie. You used to think, man, I got to get it. Anyway, I, by any means necessary. I don't care if somebody get hurt. I ain't got to love my neighbors myself. What that mean? No, I got to get mine and you got to get yours. You're not loving your neighbors yourself when you serve in, uh wickedness, but unrighteousness, and you serve in, and when you were serving of sin, child, please. Those are what Paul says. But that you thank God that you were the servants of sin, were. That's past tense. Notice, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you, being then made free from sin. That's what this day represents. You've been made free from sin by the blood. The blood was shed for you. Now you have learned this feast because you've been made free from serving sin. Notice, he says, you've been made free from sin. Ye became the servants of righteousness. What is righteousness, y'all? Let's hold this part right here. Let's go to Psalms 119 and 172. Look at what is righteousness. What is it that we come to serve now? That's why we keep the feast. Psalms 119 and 172. Psalms 119 and 172. Hold that spot right there in Romans. We'll come back. Psalms 119 and 172. Notice what it says. My tongue shall speak of thy word. Notice. All thy commandments are righteousness also. Now we have the commandments of God. That's why Exodus 20th chapter contains the commandments of God. And the first thing he said, I shall have no other God before me. The God that bring you out of bondage, that's the one you serve now. Because you've been made free from sin. You're no longer a servant of sin, but our obedience unto righteousness which is keeping the commandments of God. And that's what God brought his church out for because they have even keeping the commandments. That's why he put them in wilderness and they became his what? His church. So back to Romans 6 chapter. Back to Romans 6 chapter. And we're going to read that verse 18 and then we're going to read on that. Romans 6 and 18. Being then made free from sin, ye became a servant of righteousness or commandments of God. You became a servant of the commandments of God. You speak of his word now. Notice how Paul break it down though. I speak after the man of men because of the frontiers of your flesh. Because if you we can read, if you serve at your flesh, ye shall die. But notice, he said, But as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanliness and to iniquity unto iniquity. That's how you think, man. Everybody got chip on the side. Everybody's lying. Everybody going, <clears throat> uh, going crazy. Everybody do whatever they want to do. So I can do whatever I want to do. That's when you were servants of iniquity, uh, servants to uncleanness, and to iniquity unto iniquity. You don't see nothing wrong with doing wrong. Because that's all you're looking at is wrong. Because you were servants of sin. Notice what Paul said up there, but thank God that you were servants of sin. That's how servants of sin think. But notice how Paul breaks it down. Even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness or to his commandments, which bring about the fruits of holiness, according to God's word. Notice, but when you were the servants of sin, notice all he said in the past tense, you were, because people that are servants of sin don't read this book. People that no longer want to serve sin, read this book and believe this book. That's how it's supposed to be. I'm saying that's how it's supposed to be. 
You come to this Bible because you want to say, hey, I was a servant of sin. That's why Paul said, when ye were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness, child, please. Whatever was on your mind, how it handled your mind, you don't care if it was right. You was free from righteousness. But notice, the fruit ye had then in those things, when ye are now ashamed, notice Paul says, for the end of those things is death. That's why when Jesus shed his blood, when you take that blood, the things before that, if you didn't get that blood, you were in death. That's what's so important about the Passover. Because he's showing, look, I've been freed by his blood, redeemed by his blood. So now I'm free from the stuff that was going to kill me. That's why this first day is so important. No side Paul for the month says. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, that's who you are now. That's why we keep the feast. That's why he said his church up in the wilderness because God's church keeps the feast which God gave. That's why we started out in Leviticus 23rd chapter. Straight up. So now being made free from sin, ye become servants to God. Ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. So now let's go into Matthew 16 chapter. Matthew 16 chapter. Matthew 16 and verse 6. Because remember, this is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So what does it mean you got leavened bread? We're going to understand that clearly right here. Because they had, they had its full leaven while they was in Egypt. But the Lord said, look, come out, come out. He brought them out of the house of bondage. And right here, let's see what 11 represents. Matthew 16 and 6. Then Jesus said unto them, take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees in the side of the Sadducees. Yeah. Now, wait a minute now. Was there any Pharisees and Sadducees there when the Lord brought Israel out in the first place? At the first time? For the first at the first feast of unleavened bread, but now all the way down to this point, Jesus said, "Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees." Now, I saw the apostles reacting to this, and they reasoned among themselves, saying, "Is it because we have taken no bread?" They're like, "Man, what you, what you mean the leaven of the Pharisees? Because they had received spirit yet, y'all." But watch this. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye a little faith. Why reason ye among yourselves? Because ye have brought no bread. He's trying to get them to come out of the carnal and be in the spirit with him. Because watch how Jesus takes it now. He said, Do you not yet understand? Neither remember the five loaves of five thousand, how many baskets ye took up? Meaning he made something amazing happen out of the little thing. Watch this. Neither the seven loaves or the four thousand, how many baskets you took up? No, she said, how is it that you do not understand that I spake not to you concerning the bread? Notice. And ye should beware of leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Let me read that one more time. How is it that you do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning the bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Watch this. Then understand they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but note, but of the doctrine also. That's what it was about. The doctrine. So this leaven represents a doctrine. Notice. Of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Because unleavened, we're going to read it, what it represents, but we're going to see what leaven represents. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 5 and 7 right quick. 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. So if the doctrine represents, 11, 11 represents the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, let's look at what unleaven represents in the New Testament. 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. 
First Corinthians 5 and 7. Purge out therefore the old leaven. Men purge out that old doctrine. Watch this. That you may be a new lump. For you are unleavened. Notice. For either Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. That's what we observed sundown last night on the 14th day. This being the 15th day. Watch this. He said because Christ our Passover sacrificed for us. Notice this. Therefore let us keep the feast. Then we read it. My people go there, they may hold a feast to be in the wilderness. For they were free. Notice, not with old leaven. Notice what the leaven represents. Neither with the leaven of malice or old. So the doctrine of the Pharisees was full of malice and wickedness. But this is what unleavened represents, y'all. But with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So you got to get away from the doctrine or the leaven of the Pharisees. Especially nowadays, y'all. Especially nowadays. The levels of the Pharisees and the Sadducees so puffed up. Because that puffs up. That's what leaven does to bread. But the unleavened bread of God is sincerity and truth. Let's go look, take a closer look at this. Let's go to 2 Peter 2 and 1. 2 Peter 2 and 1. Because Peter was looking at the leavening in the midst of us. And watch how he watch how he describes it. Second Peter 2 and 1. Second Peter 2 and 1. Because remember the Pharisees and the Sadducees was against Christ. And if Christ our Passover, why the church was talking about keeping the Passover? Could it be full of the leaven of the Pharisees? We'll look at it right here. Watch this. But there shall be false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable hearsays, even denying the Lord that brought them. Notice. And bring upon themselves swift destruction, and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth. Oh, this is what the unleavened bread represents now. Sincerity and truth. Because Israel couldn't have it while they were in bondage. They need the blood so they can come out and be his church in the wilderness and keep a feast. That's the truth, y'all. We got people speaking against that saying, hey, they ain't got to keep no eleven bread. That's all Old Testament stuff. That's a Jew thing when we read that. It's the Lord's thing. And the church kept it past the cross. But notice uh, verse 3. And through covetousness shall they with fiend words make merchandise of you whose judge now of long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not. Now I want to skip down to verse 17 because Peter will clean in on these false prophets. But uh, he said among us. So you got people walking around with the doctrine of leaven amongst us. Why time Peter points it out. Verse 17, we're going to skip all the way down to verse 17. Verse 17. It says, These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with tempests, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words, swelling words, we're the great on this. We're the first day. All these big fancy titles. But what are, but where are they on tomorrow? On the Easter, on the Easter Sunday. They were observing Good Friday. Added to the word of God. When the Bible simply tells us that we ought to keep the feast. Not with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The unleavened feast of unleavened bread. That's why we're here tonight. Now notice this. It says, uh, 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 verse 18, read that again. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they will work through the flesh, sorry, through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that are clean escape from them who live in error, while they promise them liberty, they promise the people liberty. Oh, come to the liberty of Christ. Oh, why are you giving me rabbit eggs? Oh, why are you giving me Christmas? Why are you giving me denomination religion? So he said, while they promised them liberty, they themselves are servants of corruption. Notice, 
for of whom a man is overcome of the same is he brought in bondage. Wait a minute, the Lord's commandment set us free. But the level of the doctrine of the Pharisees, especially nowadays, the level of the Pharisees of nowadays bring you into bondage to some man. No, he says, for after they have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. And notice, he said, if it hadn't been known, it had been better for them not to know the way of righteousness. What was righteousness, y'all? The commandments. That's his righteousness. Then, after they had known it, to turn from the holy commandment. That's what righteousness is. To turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it's happened to them according to the true proverb, the dog has turned to his own vomit again, and the sow has washed to her wallowing in the mire. So now I'm going to go to uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 5 and 17. Looking up there. We almost done, y'all. Now I'm going to, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm going to go to 2 Corinthians 12 chapter. 2 Corinthians 12 chapter. Because this leavening got to get it out, got to get it away from your house for seven days. That's why it's the physical side to this thing. Let's see how this puffing up, because that's what leavening is. Causes bread to rise. Causes a great swelling. 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 20. Let's look at this leaven, y'all. This swell. Well, she says, For I fear lest when I come, I shall not find you as such as I would, and that I shall not be found unto you such as ye would not. In other words, you, you got brothers in the absence of the minister. Hey, they one way, but when you show up, they're another way. Okay, that's what Paul is addressing. And watch this now. Lest ye be, lest there be debates, watch this, envies, wraths, strives, backbitings, whisperings, swellings. Oh, all this is leather? Yes. You don't want this in the midst of you. Amen. You really don't. You know, it says Tammuz, always causing a ruckus. Always, that's what Tammuz is making a ruckus. And you know, she said, at least when I come again, my God will humble me among you, and that I shall be well many which have sinned already and have not repented of the uncleanness and fornication and lasciviousness which they have committed. Because this stuff ought not to be among you. You may have gotten out physical leaven at your house, but guess what? This is supposed to be stuff that's out of you, period. So the physical side of getting leaven out got a spiritual application to it also, y'all. And look, let's go to uh, 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 1 Corinthians 4th chapter. 1 Corinthians 4th chapter. And verse 6. First Corinthians 4 and 6. And then we're going to skip down to verse 18. 1 Corinthians 4 and 6. No, no, so Paul did see it. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that you may learn in us not to think of men above that which is written. Why? That, said, that no one of you be puffed up. Against one another. I had a brother that was so high in his mind. He said, look, we teach it all in our class. There's nowhere else. No, you don't need to go nowhere else. We got it all. Don't nothing else need to be taught. I was like, wow, man. That is, in the back of my mind, I was like, that is really puffed up. That was the leaven in that brother that was coming out big time. We don't need to learn nothing else from nobody. I watched him. We skipped down to verse 18. He said, now some are puffed up as though I would not come to you, but I'll come to you surely if the Lord will and will not know, so, and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up. 
Notice, but the power, notice, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. That's why we can't be heels of the word, but the doers of the word. We can't be so puffed up, we know it all. It's like, can't nobody say nothing to you. You can't receive. That's why the Lord said, bless the poor and spirit, for they shall receive, call the children, be called the children of God. Uh, but in power. But I want to go. Uh, uh, let's go to uh, uh, Colossians two, Colossians two and sixteen. Colossians two and sixteen. We the greater it is. Nobody teach you like we teach you. All that's leaven. All that's puffed upness. All that. It's a, set, a sign that you under the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Because there wasn't no Pharisees and Sadducees in the beginning, y'all. When the Lord gave the commandments, it was just the 12 tribes of Israel standing right there when they heard the commandments of God, that's how no other gods before me. But right here in uh, Colossians 2, 2 and 16. Watch this, y'all. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day. See, in the man, the type of man he was talking about, you can read that in verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy or vain deceit or the traditions after the traditions of men. That's what they're doing all day on Easter Sunday, y'all. Traditions of men and not after Christ. Who what rabbits it's got to do with Christ? Anyway, notice, he says, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Now watch this. Let no man beguile you of your reward in voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which ye have not seen, vainly puffed up. Notice, by his fleshly mind. That's how you see all this greater this and the greater that. And we know it all. We got it all. We the end all to be all. Nobody do it like us. And you need to come to us and leave them alone. That's by the puffed up of their fleshly mind. That's the leveling that's out there, y'all. That's why you got to put it away physically from your house. And you put it away from you. If you're going to be a part of God's church or serve God. So now, let's go to uh, 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 Isaiah 30 and 8. We almost done, y'all. I did the 30th chapter. And verse 8. I did 30 and 8. We got one other verse after this. And uh, we're going to be done with the first line. But she said, now, go, write it in a book. Sorry, sorry. Write it before they're in a table and note it in a book that it may be for time to come forever and ever. That's why we got their Bible questions on. We read this book. So this book right here is what the Lord's talking about, y'all. Note it in the book. And he said, for the time to come forever and ever. How long is forever and ever, y'all? Okay. Even to this time, isn't it? Notice that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that would not hear the law of the Lord. Interesting. It said, Thou shalt have no gods before me. But if you're dealing with Easter Sunday, that's a whole other God. It's a pagan God, pagan fertility goddess. That's what we dealt with earlier today. How Easter is the resurrection of another Jesus. But notice, he said, We say to the seers, See not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceit. Notice, get ye out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Who do you think the Holy One of Israel is? It was Christ our Passover, which was sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the what? Feast. Not Easter Sunday, y'all. It said, let us keep the feast. And that's after the cross. 
Okay, that's Paul, a Christian, said, let us keep the feast because Christ died for us. Surely he wouldn't say, let us keep Easter Sunday, resurrection Sunday, something like that. But no, 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 no. So now, these that were, well, he called lying children, notice, that said, get ye out the way, turn the side out of the path, cause the hole on the Israel to cease from before us. Watch how much leaven they got amongst them, y'all. Wherefore well, thus said the whole one of Israel, because ye despise his word, and they do. That's why there's so many different versions of Bibles scattered throughout the churches. Notice, and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon. Notice, therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out. Swell all this level all over the place. Except for in the church of God, where the word is. What is the sad and truth is? Because he says, swelling out in the high wall whose breaking comes suddenly at an instant. Because it's going to break, y'all. It's going to fall. And it's going to look like an instant. They have so much fun, y'all. When it actually come down, it's going to look like it happened instantly. Whoa, wait a minute now. We was jamming. But we had our big thing going on. But it's going to look like an instant. No, he said, he shall break it as a breaking of the potter's vessels that is broken in pieces. He shall not spare so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it assured to take fire from the hearth to take water with withal out of the pit. Notice, for thus said the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved in quietness and confidence shall your strength shall be your strength. That's why I speak this with confidence. I'm like, well, you don't know what I'm talking about. No, you speak the word of God with confidence. That's why we keep it in feast with confidence. Because we read, that's where he said his church up at. That's what the church does when he said, rather, when he told Israel, go and serve me in the wilderness. And we read, that's where the church started. With feast of unleavened bread, y'all. And then notice, he says, uh, confidence uh, and confidence shall be your strength, but ye would not. What, what God required, y'all? Because remember, we saw the unleavened bread represent sincerity and truth. Here go our last verse. St. John 4 and 22. Our last verse. St. John 4 and 22. St. John 4 and 22. Watch this, y'all. Because if you get off at the east edge of bunny rabbits, look what the Lord said here. Ye worship, you know not what. We know what we worship. We know the Lord say, keep the feast of unleavened bread. We can read what church kept the feast of unleavened bread after Jesus' death and resurrection. Beyond the cross. The cross did not cause the feast of unleavened bread to cease. This first night is commanded to be kept. That's how we know what we worship. Rabs and eggs. We know what you worship. That's why we dealt with that earlier in the, in the Sabbath. Now look. He said, for salvation is of the Jews. Why didn't he say the Christians? Look at Christianity. Take a good look at it. It's so full of leaven, it ain't funny. But notice in the next verse. He said, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Oh, that's what the Feast of Eleven Man represents. You are in sincerity and in what? Truth. This is what it means. When you put away that leaven, you put away the doctrine that's, or the great swellings or the great words or the many that speak against the way of truth. You put away leaven of world, y'all. You put away the leaven of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, because look what it says here. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's why they couldn't stay in bond, the house of bondage. Ain't no uh, worship of spirit uh, and truth in the house of bondage, only in God's church that he brought out of, the, out of Egypt to keep his peace. This, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So I hope you have an understanding about the first day, the Feast of Unleavened Bread.